I spent eight months just lying on the bed like a vegetable, doing absolutely nothing. I only got up when I wanted to eat. I think that I would have drunk myself to death, but I had no money for this. Valery Callsign Hartman was quietly lying in a Kiev hospital, just staring at the ceiling. During the war, he was shell shot twice. His home in Lihuhansk Oblast was hit by a shell. So the outlook for him was pretty grim. I also thought that there could be no life after the war. My state of depression lied purely in the fact that when I was at the front, it seemed that the whole country is behind me. And when you come here, you understand that no one even cares. The man watched all of this with a sad heart and a lack of understanding. He communicated with colleagues and volunteers to somehow be distracted. Here he met a girl who was a volunteer in the hospital. Neither he nor I immediately liked each other. For me, he was just a guy who needed pills, well, some kind of help, like any soldier. And he felt the same way. He later shared with me, oh, here comes the girl with the hair bun. In fact, he did not have any immediate feelings. But he needed more and more drugs. The meetings began to occur more and more often, and Valery gradually began to view an ordinary girl with a hair bun from a totally different perspective. During one of the meetings with Tanya, she gave me a present, a hoodie with an inscription, Heroes of ATO. It was unexpected and very pleasant. And since then, I started to bombard her with text messages, call her and say, Tanya, I'm going to open a coffee shop, do you want to drink some coffee? The girl did not refuse coffee, and Valera tried his best to please her and even made coffee according to a recipe. The man had no coffee machine back then, so he made coffee by the traditional method. Interesting, Valera was frothing the milk for me by hand, just using a whisk. Now they're making each other's coffee in turn. His coffee is better than mine. This is not surprising, says Valera, because before the war he worked as a barista, and having his own restaurant was his childhood dream. As a kid, I watched movies about the 1930s in Chicago, and there were these underground bars where the owner was standing at the bar, wiping the glasses with a white cloth, and behind him there was a shotgun. After that, when they asked me, who do you want to be when you grow up, I answered, a don of the Sicilian Mafia. But later I realized that it was problematic to go to Sicily, and since that I had to open some kind of a bar or cafe in my native land. So I grew up with this idea. He invested money, which he received as compensation for his disability in business. Then he registered as an entrepreneur took part in a tender and opened the first venue together with his fellow ADO veterans, who decided to try their hand in the coffee business. The guys created a collective project under one brand name. Valery smiles, saying they have everything in their stock and they make sure that what they don't have will be delivered to them. Good day, do you serve hot chocolate? We make a delicious one, 100% natural. For us, reputation is more important than super profits. So, as a rule, we do not offer chemical products to clients, says Valery. I did not open a coffee house for profits, but to make my childhood dream come true, he assured us. Currently, I'm somehow slowly using my potential. It gives me inner inspiration, which makes life seem wonderful. Veteran Volodymyr Shevchenko also decided to try his hand in the coffee business under the same brand name. He already has several places selling coffee and he manages to control the entire process at work from the comfort of his home. Hey, a new swab to mop the water? It mops, but cannot squeeze the water out. Keep it. Need a towel? How many clean ones and how many dirty ones? And can you please make me my favorite coffee? Arabian plant? with a little more than half the sugar. Volodymyr had tried his hand in business before. One day he was selling different equipment, another day foodstuffs. Such activities, of course, brought income. But from time to time he wanted something else. The thirst for new experiences and new achievements has always prevailed over the fear in him that something might not work out. But one day, unexpectedly for his family and friends, he packed up his bags and went off to war. 
It was on our wedding anniversary. We were about to go to a restaurant. I was already dressed up and in makeup. Then someone calls him. He talks, turns the phone off. He said, the restaurant idea is cancelled. I received a draft notice. I received a clean bill of health. And tomorrow morning I should be at the recruitment office with my things. Svetlana did not expect such a present. She felt hurt and helpless at the same time. The woman who got used to supporting her husband was left alone with two young children. She asked him several times, do you have to go? But she knew the answer perfectly well. Volodymyr, who grew up in a military family, could not do otherwise. It was more difficult with her daughter and son. She had to explain to them what war was and why their father was called to go to the front. When the time came for my husband to go, we did not immediately tell Danilo. I will paint more stars here. This makes it look like nighttime already. But Danny, the stars are not blue. I painted the world in which the war began. That is the main support of our family. I would like to learn from my father's determination. That is exactly why Volodymyr went to defend Ukraine, so that the war was only in painting. It was important for him that his daughter and son lived in a peaceful country and never really came into contact with the war. Volodymyr did not say what he was doing in the ATO zone and what was happening there. He tried not to upset his family. On the phone most often, he talked about plans for the future and said he would return home soon and organize some kind of business. He did not know what kind of business it would be, but one day he realized that he was missing a rich cup of genuine coffee. This was likely the spark of his idea to open a business of his dreams. When we took up duty in Avdivka, there was a terrible lack of sleep. All were frightened, inexperienced. Something was shooting and exploding around us. And there were constant duty details. You sleep only two or three hours a day, so the first week I tried to drink instant coffee. When we were moved to Slavyansk, our brigade's home, in the ADO zone, the first thing I did was to go in search of some decent coffee. He began to think about the implementation of the coffee house project already back then. He was interested in learning how to prepare coffee in the field, to not drink the only available coffee that he called instant dishwater. Svetlana was happy that her husband has some plans for the future, but whether he will be able to return to a normal life and implement them, she did not know. All the more, there were always ill-wishers who assured her that Baba's attitude will manifest itself later. Everyone was telling me, well, do not relax prematurely, because most of the guys who come back stay a month tops and then they start missing something that was on the front line and want to return. Indeed, when Volodymyr came home, it was the end of story for the dreams of his own business. He did not want to work, everything was different and incomprehensible in a peaceful life. A few months of this frustration and he realized that he had to pull himself together. The man realized that he will not be the same person again, as the work took its toll. Now he needed to learn how to live with this, because he had a wife, children and living in the country for which he fought and defended. He began to go to all these free of charge discussion groups, which were aimed at the rehabilitation of soldiers. Self-confidence began to manifest itself more and more. Support of relatives and friends had its effect. The veteran guys advised to live out the coffee dream. But Valodia did not have the necessary experience in the restaurant business. Then he asked his friend, a former comrade in arms, to hire him work in a pizza place. I said I'm ready to do any job, even a dishwasher. I want to see how the venue works from the inside. He replied, come check it out, he'll be a pizza maker. I said I cannot cook anything except eggs. He said, no worries, we will teach you. In 10 days I started my shift and worked for about three months. And then, having acquired new experience, he rented a trailer from a friend and opened his first coffee shop. Hi. Hi. Cappuccino, please. Cappuccino. Small or large? 
Large. Sugar. Red pepper. Red pepper. Great. That's quite an unusual choice. Perfect cappuccino is the synergy of coffee and milk. A perfect working day. That's when everything goes according to plan. But no one is immune from unplanned things, especially if you are new in this business. <clears throat> but the main thing is to start, Volodymyr assures. This is what frightens the guys who come back from the ADO zone. The problem is that they cannot return to their former place of work. After all, for those who are fighting there, the orders of those in charge seem quite absurd and former military officers and servicemen have no clue about how to be their own boss. There's one interesting phrase. When you don't know what to do, just take a step forward. If you're not comfortable with something in your life, take a step forward and change it. But the guys are afraid to take that risk. There, they were not afraid of facing a tank with a rocket-propelled grenade. But when they return home, they're afraid to change their profession. They're afraid to learn something new, to change their careers. These are strange yet insignificant fears that put them off balance. But it's not a matter of rehabilitation, it's a matter of no belief. In order to be successful in any business, you have to be a professional in the field that you're engaged in, says Volodymyr. The market is now competitive, but soldiers will find the skills they acquired in the war will come in handy. Namely, the ability to think on one's feet, bend with the wind and cope with stress. Mind you, this is not a 100% guarantee of the success of any venture. When starting something, we do not know where it will end. You imagine one concept, the object begins to work, and as it goes, you understand that the concept has changed. And then it does not work. But this is normal, and you have to try. Volodymyr, along with his fellow ADO veterans, is ready to consult those who still have doubts about starting up their own business. He's even willing to take them on board. On average, it takes two months, well, maybe a month, to understand how the equipment works, to understand how to set up a coffee grinder, and how to work with milk and combine all these elements into one. I'm currently employing two guys, one from the 79th Brigade, the second one from the 1st Tank Brigade. The first thing that is very important, Volodya assures, is not to have unnecessary illusions and to carefully think through your startup ideas and strategy. And the secrets of success is simple – to work, not to wait for help from the employment center, the authorities or some wealthy uncle. There is an opinion that you can only run a business by having a lot of money and strong coattails, and you won't achieve anything otherwise. It's a delusion. Also important is forming a good team of like-minded people together never cutting corners on the comfort of staff and visitors and developing the skills of a good manager. Volodymyr constantly hones these skills. He says anything can happen, but subordinates seem to not complain. He deals with situations in this way. First, he examines them, then he draws conclusions, and then he takes action. I had experience with other bosses. They pulled no punches immediately, without looking into the essence of a particular situation. Volodymyr plans to expand even more. He took out a loan, bought new equipment and is undertaking repairs. He's already preparing to meet new visitors in other coffee shops. Of course, in business, says Volodya, there's also the possibility of failure or even bankruptcy. But for the veteran, this risk is much smaller than the risk of hidden rock bottom due to inaction and depression. When Volodya has a sense of purpose, there are no obstacles he can't overcome. He's smart and he likes to refine himself and his network. He's obsessed with what he does. The Volodya, whom I fell in love with 20 years ago, is back. 